Hello and welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2 and this is going to be part of a little epilogue little mini series of videos on the end of Naoko Ogigami Retrospective which me and Daisuke did if you have seen that if you haven't go and check those videos out because we're talking about a couple of films that we've already covered really but I looked back on my thoughts on some of those films and I wasn't completely I feel like I could have expressed myself a little bit better but anyway so I wasn't planning on doing this, but the whole reason I wanted to watch more of Ogigami's films was because in the first Asian cinema season, I watched Close Knit, which I fell in love with, thought it was an amazing film. And then a year ago, I showed it to you, just because I wanted to show it to you, and you really liked that film, mm. right? So that's when I thought, wow, okay, this is actually one of my favorite films now. I want to see more of her movies. So I went and watched all of her films that are available to English speakers, and that's where the series where me and Daisuke reviewed all of her films came from. That was like a year ago now. The whole Naoko Ogigami retrospective was mostly filmed last year. So it's been like a year, because the whole Asian cinema season has been like, you know, I've been putting videos together for it for a very long time, and I felt like returning to those films again. So we watched a couple. Um, so the one we're talking about now... Uh, will be the first one we watched, which was... Megane. Right, Glasses. Um, so that's the English title. And we had a really interesting way of watching this because I came home from yeah. work on my break. It took and, us a week. <laughs> right, so I came home from work on my break and I put the film on. So I sometimes have an hour break, I sometimes have 45 minutes. And I wasn't really thinking, okay, we're going to sit down and watch this film for a few days. Every time I have my break, I just decide to put it on and you kind of watched along a little bit. And then for the next like three or four days, every day I come back on my break and we'd watch another 20 minutes or so until the final day when I was off. So we got to kind of like properly finish it. So we, we watched this in a very staggered, episodic way, which for me really worked with the film. Like I hate doing that normally. I don't like watching a film in multiple segments. You know, it just I like just watching a film done you know that kind of thing but this film it really worked for i don't know I, I really enjoyed kind of taking my time with it and it's a film that takes its time very much i read that when this was screened in some film festival uh ogigami put out a, a warning to the audience you might fall asleep while watching this but that's probably within the spirit of the movie anyway so it's okay <laughs> you know it's a very it's part of twilighting twilight yes it's a very slow film about a, a, a uh, we call it not middle-aged but you know yeah. 30s you know woman comes into a you don't think so i'd say late 30s 40s 40s yes well i guess you know it's, it's hard, to, hard Remember to tell most japanese women look a lot younger yes than what they are okay as long as you say that i'm fine uh, okay it's so, a compliment sure they yeah, have no, some really good facial creams I, and stuff like that I, I agree but sometimes when you say stuff like that it comes out wrong for some if people. it was the other way around it would be rude what other way around? If I said that Japanese women look older than what they are. I suppose, yeah, that would probably be more of a... Anyway. You guys look young, man. So, yeah, so wait, anyway, so this woman comes in and uh, comes in. <laughs> she arrives in the film on this island in Japan and she's there to visit a very small... What would you even call it? Um, it's not a resort, is it? It's not even a hotel. It's kind of just this house next to a beach where people come and stay sometimes, you know. It's uh, um, a very small... Lodge. A lodge, a lodge is a good, yeah, is a good way of putting it. I think it's mm. it's appropriate. And she has come for a break, and in for an indeterminate amount of time. And that's the film. She kind of hangs out on the beach and stuff. And we have a few characters there, a very small group of characters mm. who stay at the same place. The it's guy, the guy who owns the thing, the guy who owns it and kind of runs it. And uh, there's another woman, an older woman, who runs a little stall on the beach where she makes shaved ice. And then there's a younger woman who's a young teacher who kind of frequents the area as well. Teacher? Yeah. I thought she was a student. No, she's a teacher. She says She's the... always late for school. Yeah, she says that she's a biology teacher, I think. At one point she's talking about flowers and things. Yeah, she is a teacher. I thought she was a student. Yeah, she's, she looks very young and uh, anyway. Yeah. So, because she was all like rude and stuff like that, like a teenager would be. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, she's... Find it, finding Did her way. Did she say she's a teacher? Yeah, she is a teacher. Yeah. Wow, I missed that one. Yeah. In in my head, she was just a student. I think I thought that one when I first started the film, but then, you know, as the film goes on, she does clarify. And that's one thing I like about the film is that there's mystery around the characters in the film. 
you know, you wonder why the guy who owns it, like, you know, how did he get into this spot of owning this place and running this place? And then the woman with the shaved ice, like, what's her story? And throughout the film, the characters will say things like, you know, what does she do? You know, another character will be like, oh, she teaches yoga in Thailand. Really? I don't know, you know. So it's just these the questions that we have, the characters ask of the other characters, but we still don't get answers. And it's not really about backstory so much as it is about people in this place who, during the spring, are... What would you say, really? I mean, what, what did you think of the film and, and what the characters are really doing? Well, the main character obviously just wants to get away from reality where she used to be. And she just wants a break. Go, yeah, she wants a break for everything. And apparently she just wanted a place where there was no cell refre- reception. Right. The girl who I thought was a student, I thought just hung around there because she didn't fit in anywhere else. Yeah, that's the impression I get. Yeah. Uh, but apparently she's a teacher, but the same goes for her. The older lady I thought was there and kind of owned things with the guy in the beginning until it kind of was re- revealed that that wasn't the case. Yeah. Uh, so I was confused about her, but I understood about her in the end. Yeah. Uh, just because of the way she was leading all the kids and everything like that in the morning sessions and so on. And then the guy himself, I thought he just lived there and he ran that little inn or whatever we call it, Mm -hmm. and that he just accepts everyone. Yeah. I like how at the beginning he he points out that the sign on the wall is very small. He he doesn't want that many visitors, you know. It's like, I'm not really advertising this place, you know. Mm. And so, I don't know, there's there's an idea of um, relaxation, I think, that the film is trying to convey. And the message is that we should, you know, take care of ourselves more than we do. And take time, uh, really take time. Like there, there's literally scenes in this film where characters are sat on the beach for minutes just looking at the sea. You know. Uh, That's what I liked about the movie. Yeah. There is a lot of scenes where you just feel as relaxed as they are. Yep, that's exactly it. Yeah. It's strange. Mm. I wonder how I would have felt if I watched the whole movie in one go. But it, it kind of has the same draw to it. Like I get with uh, the sunset movie, sunset, um, before sunrise, before, before sunrise, sun- and so on, uh, because there's nothing really going on, mm-hmm. but it's so natural that you just get like you just end up just you you become part of it in a way, yeah. and so yeah, you yeah, just yeah. feel relaxed watching it without actually feeling bored. Yeah, because it's just the most natural thing, and that captivates me. It's weird. Yeah. I can't watch too many movies of it like this in one go or anything. Sure, yeah, yeah. But movies that you sell to me mainly are just things where you go, it's just a group of people sitting in a cafe and they're talking and I'm like, yeah, fine, let's watch it. Mm. I will always be in a mood for a movie like that and I think it's just because I, I just relax. And because you can be them, I guess. Yeah. It's very relatable. It's, it's very basic in the terms of this woman who's a little bit uptight, goes for a holiday on a you know, small kind of island in Japan, and she doesn't want to be bothered. She doesn't want to be kind of, you know, eat with everyone else. She just wants to be on her own, basically. And as the movie goes on, they kind of slowly teach her how to become a bit more relaxed about that kind of thing and to, um, to properly relax, not just to kind of, uh, I don't know what the term would be, but I, I get the feeling that this woman... Is coming there to, okay, I'm just going to like sit on the beach. And, no, 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 no. Because she wants to come and she's like, what's the touristy th- stuff to do? And they're like, there's nothing touristy to do here. That's, yeah. It's just... People come to do twilighting. Right. So yeah, so twilighting is a thing that's brought up throughout the film. And that's kind of almost a... It's kind of a mystery in the sense that she doesn't know what it means. And she's struggling to figure out what it means. We don't really get to know what it means. And mm. I think that's the thing. The director wants you to think... Yeah, what, what does it mean to you? What, like, yeah. Based on what you've seen in the film. And so, anyway, so as this woman comes in and then she, the kind of, her resolve slowly kind of goes back and she lets herself become part of this lifestyle in a way um, for a short period. I think that's how the audience should feel, hopefully. I think that's probably the, the desired effect where you maybe you sit down to watch a film you want to just kind of relax a little bit or whatever and slowly you kind of absorb yourself into the you know the very chilled and relaxed and i love the 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 setting of it it's so beautiful so it's very easy 
to kind of um, get lost in that and just it shot very well, you know, without feeling like it's trying to be flashy with the visuals. It's all very delicate and I think quiet. It's, yeah, I think it's a very good movie for stressed out people to watch. Yeah. Because it forces you to relax in a way. It forces you to want to go to somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know? And and there's a little bit of humor there, you know, but it's it's all very natural again, I feel. Um, and I love the the old lady, uh, Masako Motai, or Motei, I believe is yeah. her name. And she's just, she's in quite a few of Ogigami's films. Just a really good character actor, I think. She just, the way she's very careful, not careful, but like precise in the film. Like there's a scene where she's cooking beans and she's just stood there like, just waiting for the right moment. And the scene's really like drawn out. But she's so precise with everything. And I, I like that scene too. Yeah, yeah. It's... it's so weird how it got me in. But that must mean that the timing in the movie, it's perfect, isn't it? Yeah, I think you Because could... at a certain point, you would think, okay, so they should cut the scene out. Yes, yes, it's a great point. But I never thought about that. When, when they were just watching the beans, I didn't go like, where's the next scene? I went like, yeah. how long is this going to go on for? wasn't like a ghost story where she's eating a pie for five that minutes. That was too long. Right, exactly. But, or, or Brad Pitt driving a car. <laughs> so Tarantino. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there's a sense um, of timing, as you say, that I don't think is apparent when you really think about it. Because no. you watch a film like this and you might think, oh, she's just letting the scenes drag out, you know, or whatever. But it's I think you're right. It's very intentional because it doesn't do that in the beginning. No, for sure. But the yeah, scenes yeah, it, are yeah, yeah. shorter and as you get more relaxed and more into yeah, that's a great the point. movie, I never thought about that. Yeah. the more they drag it out. It grows because, into it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just like she is growing into it because she's not comfortable in the beginning. Mm. And you remember how I said that I felt like she was aware of the camera? Okay. And I think, I don't know, maybe that's intentional because that makes the viewer more wary as well. Okay. I don't know, because I was thinking, oh, is, is her acting is, bad? Is or this... is it? And then after a while, I thought she was great. So, yeah, I don't know. It's something very psychological about this movie. It's funny because when we started the film, like within the first few minutes, you were like, oh, she looked at the camera. Then I thought, don't ruin this film for me. <laughs> like, I thought you were going to be like negative on it all the time. But Yeah, but that's it. It, it made me kind of like, like her in a way. And then after a while, yeah. it's like... Yeah, you're going to go back, you know, and then we get to this other place and it's now, like, no, you want to go back to that one. I, I love that scene uh, when she decides she's leaving the, the lodge, we'll call it, and she goes to another hotel on the island and they're like, okay, here's a, here's a stick, get working. You know, we, we, we do like garden work in the morning <laughs> and studying in the afternoon and it just cuts to her walking off. So she's running with her suitcase away, and, actually. And then the whole scene when she has to walk back it's so drawn out like it she really lingers on shots of the, the woman just dragging her suitcase but it, it, it makes you feel you know how much she has to walk back yeah. and how impossible it would be for her to probably get back before nightfall and then she obviously is kind of rescued and, I wonder what and brought happens back. to her suitcase i know yeah that's 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 one thing where i kind of think i'd be like no i'm, I, I'm keeping my stuff i'm not just leaving I, I guess the next day that's how desperate she was to go back with him though yeah and i imagine like off camera off screen like maybe the next day he drove her out to pick her stuff up and she kind of well like, he did say he was going to pick up her stuff earlier and he didn't do that did he oh yeah i forgot about that <laughs> <laughs> i like the, the the dog who's there and yeah. and it's a really nice way to show that time has passed at the very end of the film when the dog has the, the puppies and stuff. Um, there's like focus on the food preparation and stuff and it's a lot of food I've never really had before but it just looks nice and tasty and you know so there's like that element of it as well and yeah just the, I, I love this film. I really do. Watch it again. I enjoyed it even more because I feel like this film um, Glasses and then her previous film Seagull Diner are very very similar in terms of um, uh, the way they don't have much of a s traditional story. And mm. when I first watched those two films, it was Seagull Diner first, then Glasses. And I kind of always thought, Glasses is great, but I, I love Seagull Diner more. But this time, I preferred Glasses, I think. I just think it's you a more... The other way it's a slightly more accomplished film, I think. And But then it, there are differences to them, but I, just, uh, I definitely preferred this one. And I would say now that this is another one of my favorite films, which it wasn't last year. But 
yeah, I was I was feeling a bit down, I think, that day, and I want I, I felt like this is gonna make me feel a little bit better. And it did. That film got me through that week so well. I couldn't but wait I think to it, get on my break and watch another twenty minutes with you. It was Did really you nice. enjoy watching it a little extra because I enjoyed it so much too? Of course, yeah. Because I'm thinking this movie is a very risky movie to show people. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. That's I another thing, yeah. I think that I can never show this movie to someone other than you. Uh, if if I had watched it first, I would have trusted you with it. But I can't think of anyone else who would sit through that beach scene and the bean scene without going. Oh, I'm just gonna check sure, yeah. And that would piss me off. Sure, yeah. Because and that's not what you want to feel when you're watching it, this film as well. I so. know how intentional it is, yeah. and that's what makes the movie an art in a way you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah and if someone can't appreciate it mm. when they're watching it with me then i don't want to watch it with that person yeah so i can't that that bugs me a little bit i can't show this movie I, to anyone i would understand and even accept people not enjoying this and being bored away because i think it's yeah. all to do with your personality your sensibilities yeah. of what you enjoy but i agree that seeing that with someone who wouldn't enjoy it would make it a bit of a yeah. downer of an experience i think but i'm like that with a lot of movies like if there's a movie or a tv series that i really 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 like it becomes uh, so personal to you yeah and if you're showing it to someone deliberately want someone to share that joy you get from that movie and they're not paying attention to it it aggravates me yeah i get it I understand. if they're adults if they're sure. kids i understand yeah um but even that removed of showing it to you, I, I was just sitting there kind of in my own bubble a little bit, just thinking, fuck, I love this film. Like, yeah. It does bubble you up a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, so I was, it was really nice to watch it with you. And and I, I don't know if I'd watch it like that again intentionally, but I, I really did enjoy splitting up over a few days. and. I wouldn't mind watching the whole thing in one go one day in the future. Just to see. like. Yeah, yeah I, want, yeah. I want to see the whole thing in one but I, I did, I was left wanting more every time you stopped to leave. That's good, yeah. So. It just so happened, actually, that every time we stopped, it was like a really natural point as well, I think. Yeah, it was almost like, like it was meant to be viewed in that way in some in some the, way. The dog lounging. The dog lounging, yeah. Anyway, so we've rambled enough about this film, but I'm glad that you enjoyed it. And mm. um, uh, what can I say? I, I keep trying to get people to watch her films. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done my part now, I think, with this series, but... I definitely want to do a revisited review for it, even though you just saw my fresh review probably a few days ago, if you're even keeping up. So anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, he's all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you, because...